SECMOL, the Students' Educational and Cultural Movement of Ladakh, is an organization that was started some 25 years ago in response to the failing education system in Ladakh because we believed that it was the system that was failing and not the students. Our broader philosophy is that education should strengthen a people to live with and in harmony with their environment and it is a process whereby you learn the skills to live in this way from your environment and from your previous generation and pass it on to the next so that they can also do the same. Well at Sekmol we have lived with the earth as a building material and sun as our main energy source and sustainable dry composting toilets for now 25 years and we would like to share it with others and therefore we have started these uh, courses, these apprenticeships where anybody anywhere in the world can apply to learn hands-on how to use earth as a building material, how to identify which earth is good for which technique, for which place and which climate. So this is what we would like to share through these uh, trainings or apprenticeships. As a group, we are a varied bunch with different expectations, with different skill sets, with different uh, capabilities. We want to tailor make everything as much as possible. Practically, I want to learn a few methods of earth construction. We are trying to look at things in a very open way. The solutions lie within us. We are creating a model. That's good. A lot of uh, my work um, is working with uh, local NGOs throughout um, South Asia and, and Timor and a lot of them are starting to uh, recognise the value of um, uh, natural earth building and wanting to explore that so there's a bit of professional relevance for me. Also I've always had a personal as well as professional interest in, in natural building um, and sanitation for that matter. This course was very interesting uh, simply because of the modules in it. Uh, it had everything that one wanted to know about sustainable buildings and green buildings. Over the last six months I've been reading a lot about them and this was the perfect way to start uh, thinking about having my own green building. To become self-sufficient I see three basic needs, food, clothing, shelter. So building with earth is part of my learnings of self-sufficiency for shelter. The first part of the apprenticeship course that we are conducting deals with sustainable sanitation. But we are focusing on the Ladakhi toilet, the traditional system, which itself is a very, very sophisticated system and is a wonderful example of sustainable sanitation. So as part of this apprenticeship course, what we are building is a new boys' toilet block, which consists of three Ladakhi toilets, which means that these are toilets in which no water is used, so each toilet has two chambers under it. One is used for one year and the other is used for the other year. So this is how you can fluctuate between two. And once the manure has dried inside, it can be taken into the garden for use. So we are growing food, we are eating it. So naturally, whatever we are doing at the end should feed back into growing the food. So how can sanitation systems help us close the loop? I am a big fan of the of the traditional Ladakhi toilet. When I first came here 15 years ago, it was very um, uh, kind of a revelation. If we use the human resource uh, to recycle our own nutrients, we can go on infinitely without harming the environment. So therefore, composting toilets, because what we eat, we are recycling. We are taking it back uh, to the field and it comes back as in, in a new incarnation of fresh food to us. I'm kind of inspired by some recent conversations I've had uh, with Ang Chuk about how techniques he would like to use to refine the traditional toilet to make it, um, to keep essentially all its environmental characteristics, but make it more, um, you know, palatable, if you will, more, more sort of comfortable for Westerners to use. 
And that's a really great first step, you know, and, and this little project they're doing here is going to be, you know, hopefully a, a prototype of that. Right now, what we shall be doing is, if this is the wall, we shall be digging a foundation that's wider than the wall, so that it distributes its load on a larger surface area. So, this is what we shall be digging, and we shall be digging it so many times. As many walls, those many excavations. I'm following this course because I'm studying architecture and I kind of miss the practical part in my studies. So I thought this was a good opportunity not only to get uh, like an uh, an impression of the culture and the country here, but as well as the techniques and the traditional and natural building techniques. We can drop in the last one, because nobody is there. Hey, here is there. Yeah. You can drop in here now. Okay. Earth buildings are great, but then there has to be an energy source. If you use the earth under your foot and the sun overhead, you are set. We are teaching uh, passive solar design and uh, the idea of this course is to help students how to uh, recognize and make use of their environment to make more comfortable, more energy efficient buildings and more also material efficient buildings. It's really interesting, at least it's a beginning and it helps people to, to begin to think energy is, is important, water is important, uh, materials are important, etc. So we're trying to go beyond the green concept, trying to, the world has to be invented you know, in terms of, yeah. of quality and sustainability. But. Sustainable buildings, uh, passive buildings require uh, less technology, more people involvement, uh, I tend to say passive buildings. Uh, active users, so it's a very, very good way of people to be today more socially aware uh, of um, the depletion of resources and the link with the environment. All this homework that I've done tells me that in the next 10 to 15 years we are going to see the fossil fuel energy crisis and all of us will be looking for alternative energy. So solar passive design is a great renewable way of building homes uh, in cold places. We collect the wind and then, but, but we get also, the sun. Mm, we get the sun, we get so much sun, so what would you do? Building has to be no, no, the building has to be facing It's really, I mean, it's really, a, it's really yeah. something not easy. The answer is not always easy. If you do that, yeah. you lose your ventilation potential. I think uh, the additional training we receive um, from Robert is very interesting because it shows us uh, more theoretical parts um, and it's also fun to do some calculations. I learned how to balance the temperature from internal and outside and how to how to use the insulations in the building, how to facing the building, the zoning of building, architecture of building, how to make make in a way that we get maximum so, uh, solar energy to our building. For the vertical surface, south facing, uh, for January we use 3,000 actually, we are a little pessimistic because for January the average of incident solar radiation is more in the range of 3,200, right? I didn't expect to learn so much in such a short interval and the best part was the calculations we've done. Uh, I don't know, we, we took it so seriously, we calculated each and every d uh, design of the house built in a Ladakhi environment. Everything is great, the teaching, practical work, campus, student, food, wow, just awesome everything, yeah.
We are trying to understand Earth as a material, its personality, how it wishes to behave, what, what helps it behave in a certain manner, what are the different techniques and technologies which can help us build shelter for ourselves, and how this can be done in lots of different ways. The Earth that we stand on has provided this building material for our habitation for thousands of years. And in Ladakh, our ancestors have built their dwellings from earth as you can see on the mountains in the villages we live in earth houses and not only that a third of the world's population lives in earth buildings earth building it's starting to gain a bit of traction in australia um, often people are approaching it from as much an aesthetic, aesthetics point of view rather than a, a, as opposed to the sustainability angle um, yeah personal, personally for me i think earth buildings beautiful as rammed earth in particular is quite common in Australia and if you have to be on the planet you need to respect the fact that there are only finite resources and that is why I think there is a need to build sustainably using earth resources that are available in relative abundance um, and are not um, hu uh, less human manipulated um, more eco-friendly We are exploring a lot of different technologies which use local materials and natural materials such as rammed earth which is when you compact earth between a formwork and this gives it good density and better strength. If we use earth as a building material, it's not only free for all, everybody can afford it, but also it's infinitely reusable. We have also been working with a technique known as straw clay, wherein you make a clay soup or a slurry and dip straw in it and then form different shapes with it. And once dry, this is really good insulation. How do we identify the resources around us and translate it into shelter, especially in the context of Earth, is what we'll be exploring in the next two weeks. So we have three kinds of soil samples with us. One is a sandy soil, one is a silty soil, or it's a kind of silt called Markalaka locally, and one is a clayey soil. This is coming from a place called Basgo, so we are calling it Basgo clay. So to understand these three soils better, one can add water to it, when we add water to clay, it will expand and once it starts drying, it will contract and start to crack. When you add water to silt, it will expand but not as much and there will be minor cracks. And with sand, there will be absolutely no cracks at all because it is completely inert matter. So the cigar test helps us understand how much clay, silt or sand we have in the soil sample that we will be using for construction. We can also make cookies of these three kinds of soil so we make a cookie and let it dry overnight and then the next day we can break the cookie to try and see and hear the cookie one can also try to test the edges of the cookie to see how they crumble so these tests help us understand what kind of soil we should use for construction so if it is too clay a soil then it will crack and that's not good if it's too sandy it will start crumbling and even that's not good so we need a soil which has just the right amount of clay, silt and sand to build the right wall. 
when we are building this toilet, we are using different kinds of techniques. Rammed earth is a sandy technique. So if there's too much clay in rammed earth, it'll crack. So we are using sandy soil for ramming over here. But at the same time, for straw clay, we need clay or a very rich clay soil. How can we apply a traditional material in a modern way is what needs a lot more work. So education or practitioners of construction need to explore how earth can suit modern needs. We here believe that we should reinvent, rediscover the earth as a modern material that we can be also proud of. Living in earth not by chance but by choice. This is what we would like to promote. Every day I'm learning something new. The theory classes are, are absolutely engaging and interesting and challenging. I had a very good time. The first and the second module were both extremely intensive hard work. From my point of view, I knew this much and this course has given me this much. Not only um, getting the knowledge and getting the experience building something. Met and probably surpassed my expectations. My biggest disappointment is going to have to end on, on Sunday, unfortunately. A lot of meaningful hard work. We were just not learning uh, techniques in, in the theory classes and not knowing what to do. But also just meeting all the very interesting and uh, yeah, people from the different parts of India. When you do it, you learn the best. I'm very happy with, with everything that I'm, I've learned here. Thank you so much for... I mean, it's making me empowered, so I like it. Most of our people believe that our earth houses are too bad, are, we are ashamed of our dry composting toilets. Whereas the fact is that the big cities and the lifestyle there and the materials used for housing and the way the toilets work is what is creating a big mess on this earth. So my personal vested interest in this training is that uh, that Ladakh has this effect of valuing its own uh, heritage of uh, simple lifestyle with earth buildings and uh, uh, sustainable composting toilets and the use of this modern science of passive solar energy, the, the use of human resource to bring these things together.